Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today I was going to talk about how long you, how long it takes to get back in shape after you've had a layoff. But that was the original plan because I have a list of things, just a backup log of things to talk about on this channel. Some of them I get from the comments, some of them I get from, from letters that people send, uh, you know, emails, whatever. And so I decided to talk about something different, even though that was on the plan originally, because something happened today that I wanted to share with you guys in conjunction with some comments that have been put on the channel. And that inspired me to change the topic today, because what I really want to talk about is why do you need a coach? Why is a coach necessary? That's that's the thumbnail. Why is a coach necessary? Um, I had a coach when I competed in uh, track when I was in college. And that's how I got into cycling because I used to get injured. I used to have shin splints when I was conditioning to do, I used to do 100 meters. And I got into cycling just because I used cycling as cross training and just fell in love with it. And I, I knew from having a coach in college that to excel, it was quicker with a coach. So I invested in a coach. I was fortunate to be on a team that had a guy that coached, even though some of the other riders ignored him. I listened to him and I learned from him and I got books and whatever because I'm just that kind of person. I like to know things A to Z. But what I found was that I progressed so much quicker. You know, my first race, I was dropped. I worked with my coach and six weeks later, I was in the breakaway. That, that's the kind of improvement I'm talking about. And so without further ado, I want to get into the details of what made me change the topic today. I got an email. There's a guy named uh, T.S. Elliott. He's a member on Strava. He follows Velo Harmony, and he's also a legend here. And I wanted to share something that just it blew me away today because as long as I, I've been doing this, I'm still wowed by certain events. He's one of the guys that's a joy to coach. He just signed up maybe, I think, a week ago. I have not even built his plan. I'm still getting to know him. He's giving me his numbers, you know, threshold, heart rate, whatever we, we're getting there. And what had happened was the reason why he's easy, easy to coach is he's one of the guys that did the Rafa Festive 500 the same time we were doing it. And since he's in the Velo Harmony Club, we saw his stats and so forth. I remembered him when he signed up and I even asked him, are you the guy that did? And he confirmed that he had done the festive fire. Herd. Because I knew he'd been riding through the winter, I didn't need to start him with base training. I have not even built his plan. So what he asked me was, which makes it easy to, to coach him again, is he asked questions. He asked me, he said, I got group rides coming up. Should I hold off doing them until we know what we're gonna do with the plan? I told him, no, do your group ride. And I told him what to do. Then he followed up the next day with another thing question saying that this is the problem I'm having when I'm riding with the group. He was having challenges on the hills when people were attacking and so forth. So because of his questions, I was able to focus my reply. So even though I have not given him a training plan, I went ahead and told him what he needed to do during the ride, which he did yesterday. So this Friday, he did it Thursday. And he sent me, I told him what to send me as feedback. I gave him examples of what I want to hear from the ride. And he sent the feedback. I'm going to share that with you guys. Um, let's see here. He sent it to, I believe, Villa Harmony. I wish I had pulled it up before. I hate to, I think it's just, here it is. Okay. He said, and I'm going to paraphrase some of it because he, he's very detailed. And I don't want to put everything here in the video and bore some of you guys that are not into the super detail of it. He said, coach, if you intend to build my training plan in the same fashion that you gave me your advice for yesterday's fast group ride, yesterday, Thursday, today's Friday, he's in the Carolinas. He said, I'm here to tell you that you will not have many friends in the group. And then he put, ha, ha, ha. He said, last night, we rocked it. Now, who's we? I wasn't writing. He's writing. But the camaraderie from knowing that he's got somebody behind him, somebody got his back. Because the advice that I give is a shared 
thing. I want to know what the outcome would, will, will, will be. I'm in it with him. And I think he got that. You know, that's why he said we rocked it. He and I. I wasn't there. He's writing. I'm not writing. But he, he believes we have a plan and we're trying to execute a plan. So even though he's doing the writing, we're doing it together and we'll tweak as we go along. That's one of the reasons that you need a coach. You don't need to be a racer to have a coach. There are people taking tennis lessons that have coaches. They're not going to go to the U.S. Open. They want to be really good at tennis. And the reason I'm saying that is there was a gentleman here that mentioned, because I recommended to him, he had similar questions about improving. And I said, you might want to consider getting a coach. And I've told all of you guys on here in different videos, how do you get a coach? You get a good book. Because sometimes the book does not translate very well. So here it is. I have not even built his plan and he's benefiting. So what he said was, we rocked it. He said, there were approximately 40 writers in the group. He said, my biggest external challenge was not the strong cross and headwinds. It was the few writers who tried to disrupt my rhythm on the climbs. He said, but I kept thinking about what you instructed. Ride for yourself. Forget them. Be patient. Relax. Drink. I told him, drink. Eat. Don't waste any energy. Since you're having problems on the climbs, wait till the climbs so, to do your work. Don't work before you get to the climbs. That's what I told him. And then I gave him the RPMs to stay at. I already have his threshold heart rate. I told him what number to stay at. You know, I said, use this as a cap. So those are the things that you get from a coach. Focus so that you can just direct your training where you need to be. So that was the first advice I'd given him. And here it is. He said, he broke it down into the, 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 the distances in the ride. He said, the first eight miles was flat with crosswinds. He stayed in the pack. He drafted. He didn't expend any energy because that's not where he's having problems. Why pull there? Save your energy for where you're having problems. So then he said, after from eight to 16 miles, they hit some climbs. One, you know, one to two mile climbs of one to three percent. Same stuff. Paul and I ride all the time around here. We some people say you call those climbs. He rode at his threshold. He kept his cadence above what, where I had instructed. Why did I do that? Because by keeping your cadence up, your legs are fresh. So on the downhill, you can still go. And the other people who don't stay within themselves and keep their cadence respectable, their legs will tighten up. They got to rest so you can push on the downhill. And that's exactly what he did. I'm going to read the rest of it. He said, um, just like you said, because he said he stayed within himself. He kept his cadence where we, where we agreed and he stayed at threshold. He, sometimes he went slightly over, but I told him, make sure you don't blow. He stayed within himself and all the people who had been jumping, he was pulling them in. And he even made the joke. He said, like Elmer Fudd said, it's rabbit season and I'm hunting rabbits because they jump like rabbits. And if they're not experienced enough to know how to stay within themselves, they will have to slow down. So he put, he reeled all of them in and he said at the 14 and a half mile point, he, there was a climb, maybe a little over a mile at 2%. His heart rate went above threshold, but he st for a few minutes, but he was, he was fine. It, you know, because it's just a range. Your threshold is a range. You, you get an idea of where you're having problems is a range. So we're still trying to identify his threshold and we've got a number we're going to start working with. So from 16 to 26 miles, series of downhill rollers. And that's where he said he was maintaining his threshold, just like we talked about. On the downhill in those rollers, and he said that because he's a big guy, he said he's 229 pounds, and gravity helps big guys. Big guys on the flats and downhills, they can ride climbers off their wheel. Climbers can't handle downhill and a lot of uh, flat, fast riding easily. And so this is where he started gapping people. And then I think he had a camera and he filmed some of the stuff and he was wishing, he said he was wishing he had a rear camera. So oh, then he said, overall, I felt great at the end. I felt even better when he uploaded his GoPro footage because he saw things unfold on the camera. And I'm going to stop there. The point I'm trying to make is this. He had a plan. I said, I made suggestions because he told me he was having problems when people will attack. And what I talk about here all the time, I told him, forget about them. Just ride your ride. And that's what he did. So now 
He doesn't have to worry about if somebody jumps, do I go with them? You can if you want to, but don't feel like you have to. I talk about it all the time in a group rise, Paul and I do. By staying within himself, what ended up happening is he dropped them on the rollers, on the downhills. He was gapping them, all the jackrabbits, because they needed to rest. Because they had been killing themselves and they, they did not have the discipline or they did not know their capabilities or their limits. So they went beyond their limits. That's the key. So all we're trying to do here is getting him to get to know himself. That's the benefit of having a coach. Whether you're going to play soccer or play tennis, you go to the tennis court and you're swinging a racket wrong. It will take you longer to get consistent shots over that tennis net. If you don't have an instructor that tells you, you need to turn the face this way, in this, you need to serve this way. It's those little pointers that you, that's where you get the value of instruction, not just in sports, in anything you do. You go to a driving school. I mean, I've been to driving school on the track where in three days, I learned more than I had learned just driving generally. Because the things that we're not aware of was pointed out to me. You know, how to set your mirrors and all of that to where you don't have to be turning your head around to look for blind spot. You know, those little things. I'm using those analogies because somebody on the channel said that I'm not competing when I recommend it. You might, you might want to get a coach because you got, because it takes time to get to know you. No one's going to invest their time in you for nothing. You need to pay for those services. It's a service. When I go to the doctor for a checkup, I pay for that service. You know, that's the way it is. So I suggested get a coach so you can improve because the questions indicated the person was interested in getting better. And he came back and replied and said, no, he's not competing and this and that. So his assumption was you need to be a racer to get a coach, which was which is totally wrong. You know, and that's the thing I talk about on this channel here. It's OK not to know stuff. But when you jump to conclusions and make assumptions in life, you hold yourself back. Find out. Before you make assumptions, find out you want to get better. This is what it takes. Go to a group ride. You see a fast rider. Ask him what he's doing. He'll tell you. He'll probably tell you I had a coach for two years. or I was on this team and we had a, this. We had that. That's where you get the information on that. He had instruction. You want to learn how to swim really well. You get a good swim coach. You will do a lot better than going and splashing around in the water and trying to figure it out. Same thing with fit. You want to figure out your own fit? Not everybody can do it. You have to have the aptitude. There are little nuances that no matter how many videos you watch, how many books you read, you just miss. I've talked about it before. There, there are guys on here like Jose Santiago who watch all the videos. We talked on the phone one time. Or, and then I think an email. And he said, yes, people really need to follow up because they're just things you miss. You know? So the, the, the point I'm trying to make is do not disregard what you need if you want to get better, because it would just reduce the, the pains you have to go through. And then you make these small improvements and you can get frustrated and even quit. Whatever you're doing in life, if you want to be really good at it, you need instruction. That's why when people are hiring people in companies, they say they want people who have college degrees. It's not that college degrees is necessarily a requirement, but by going through college, you show the aptitude for being disciplined because nobody wakes you up to go to class or do your homework or go take your exams. And you go through that for years. This employer knows now when you, sh you will show up to work because you're disciplined enough to have gone through college. When I used to hire people in corporate America, that was the reason we asked for college degrees. I didn't care about the grade. You graduated college, fine. You didn't kill anybody in college. You got, you know, you're not a maniac. When they would come to the interview, I rarely talked about their grades or whatever. I wanted to know the personality. I even asked one guy, have you ever got a speeding ticket on the way to work? And he was nervous. You know, he said, yeah. So I said, why? He said, I was late for work. I hired him on the spot. And he was blown away because he thought that would have been a problem. And what I told him was, not that I want you to get a speeding ticket, but what it showed that you, the work was important enough to where you were doing what you had to to get there. You were behind and you wanted to get there. That's the kind of drive I'm looking for. I want somebody who's going to come to work and work. I told him, I said, I don't have time to watch you. I'm busy. I got my own work. I said, if I got to do your work, I don't need you. 
That's the kind of boss I was. I was not micromanaging people because I used to cycle and I worked. I didn't have time to watch anybody. If you didn't do your job and I had to do your job, then we had a problem. Because I was expected to keep my department running. So when people were sick or whatever, I had to fill in. And I understood that. But when you start slacking off and I'm giving you a check, then you don't need to be there. I might as well keep your money in my pocket. Anyway, I'm getting a little <laughs> off target. So what I want to summarize by saying here is... You need a coach if you want to focus your training and improve in a short period of time and not waste hours out there. And you need somebody you can bounce things off of, somebody who can help you analyze what's going on with your performance. That's the biggest benefit. If you have nobody to bounce things off of, it can be a very painstaking and frustrating experience. You know, even if you have a good teammate that you can bounce, that, that helps. But if you're just out there going to a group ride, not knowing what's going on, because not every rider at a group ride is forthcoming and helpful. Not everybody wants you to improve. So you, there, are, there are a few riders that will be open and the rest of them, won't, won't want, they won't want you to get better. They could see your potential and see something that's off, but they won't point it out. So if you want to improve, either you educate yourself by seeking the information online in a book or whatever, and if that's not enough, get expert help. Invest in yourself. I tell people that same thing with fit. If you don't want to go through years of uncomfortable writing, invest in your fit. Uh, I talk to a lot of the shops around here because I, I do fit around here and I've been chatting with them to try to see why don't you guys advertise fit or whatever. And my suspicion, they, they really didn't give me a reason, but I suspect that I think most people walking into bike shops will feel like it's an upsell if people will push fit. Some bike shops offer fit if you buy a bike from them, but the problem is the people doing the fit are not experts in those situations for the most part. Because the bike shops that are affiliated with expert fitters, you have to pay for that fit because it costs money for those experts to come and do the fit for you. So be leery of the free fit that's thrown in with a, with a bike. Because they're, they're, they're setting people's saddles very high. I get a lot of guys in here. Oh, there's a bike shop. I'm not going to name names. But there's a bike shop here I've been getting a lot of people from. And all of them, the saddle's way too high. And I ask them, what are they using? They take a angle meter on their knee. And say, so, oh, you're supposed to be between 25 and 35 degrees. And that's it. How can a range apply to everybody? In any, any situation. So uh, I shared TS's... Uh, successful ride yesterday with you guys so that you would know that you either need to get a good book, go online, read, focus, get a good friend who knows about riding. You can't just show up and ride and not have a plan and do very well because then you will be reacting to other people. T.S. been riding for a while. He's been riding with these guys for a while. It's good to know that he's got group rides because I will incorporate that into his plans, make sure he's getting enough rest and so forth. That's another thing you get from the proper expert. You will get rest plan built into your plan so you don't show up tired for your important rides. And then over time, you will get to learn what your body needs. And that's what we're going to go through. I've already told him that. I said, we need to get to know what your body needs, how many days it takes you before you feel fresh. He's riding, he's doing a, a, a hill, a mountain climb tomorrow, I believe. And I just sent him an email letting him know that you need to make sure if you're tired, it's okay because you just did a hard ride on Thursday. You may not be fully recovered. So make sure if you're tired, don't force yourself. Let your body get to whatever pace it wants and just ride it and enjoy the experience. You don't need to be at your best at every ride. Sometimes it's just not possible. It's okay to accept the fact that I'm below par today as long as you understand why. Then you can make those adjustments that when you get an important ride or grand fondo coming up, you back off and say, I need to rest now so I can be ready then. Okay? A coach is important. It is not required. But if you want to improve quickly, you need to have a structure. Whether you get the structure from a very good book, I recommended uh, Greg LeMond's book, there's another book by Joe Friel, The Cyclist Training Bible. Those are the two books that are really very good. But Joe Friel's book is so much more technical. Le Mans' book, 
I like because it covers everything and it's kind of layman. Joe Friel's book is a little more technical into training and sometimes it can be over the head of the average person. You can start with those now. Not everybody can read the book and really be able to get everything out of it because it has to do with how well that writer communicates or how well you receive the information. It's a challenge. It can be a challenge. And here it is in less than a week. TS has already benefited from signing up. So now he's he's got me. He can send me an email with whatever questions or issues he have. I reply promptly, you know, usually within less than 24 hours. I replied because email is very convenient. You know, I don't have to set extra time aside. I can think through what the person's talking about. I reply. That's another benefit. You got somebody to go with. So together we're going to build his plan and focus on what he wants to improve on. That's what coaching is about. I can't make you faster if you don't do the work. You still got to do the work and you got to give me feedback. You know, so he's training with a heart rate monitor. That's all he has. And he's doing fine. You train with whatever you want because it's good to have something to at least gauge. Even if it's not a heart rate monitor, your, your breathing or RPE, you know, that, that's what he's also using that in conjunction to find his functional threshold heart rate. So he watched the video on here on how to find your, your FT uh, uh, HR and he used that and went out and just shredded, you know. So, you know, so I'm sure he's pumped and he's excited for Saturday. So I had to tone him down a little bit to reply and say, you might be tired on Saturday. So if you're tired, that's okay. Just let your body do what it wants to do because you're still going to get a benefit out of it. You don't have to be at your peak all the time. So I'm going to stop there and just let those of you doubters that don't believe that you need some structure to improve and don't let the word coach scare you away. Coach can be replaced with a book, it can be replaced with you downloading training stuff off the internet or having a good friend who's giving you good advice, whatever. That could be your coach. But you're going to have to invest in one way or another an investment of your time to build a structure. If you can't do it yourself, the investment is in the purchase of a book and your time to read the book. Some people are too busy or they feel like, you know, I may, not, I may mess up if I try to do it myself. So... I'm just going to go ahead and get somebody who already knows what to do and tell them I'm having this problem. What do I need? That's why he was able to get the, the results right away. You know, even before I put a plan together for him. And that's, that's what his email was like. If this, you're not going to be popular with the group. It, you know, so the, the key is that you can improve on your own. It would just take longer. See, he felt like he had to chase those people. I told him, no, you don't. We got to get to know you. And see what you can do. And then when you start doing stuff, they will be chasing you. Because you will be the leader because now you know, you know what you're up to. That's the thing. You know. So uh, I, uh, I'm going to stop there and just let you guys know that go ahead and get your case in. But I'm going to stop there and say get your case in. And no matter what, don't let anything stop you. Focus on your training and you will improve. <music>